Menopause is a permanent cessation of menstrual cycle. Okay, so it is the end of menstrual cycle story to the female. Okay, it should be permanent cessation for one year. Okay, for how much? For one year with an elevation in FSH levels. Of course, because FSH uh, is working on the ovaries. Okay, if we have an ovarian failure or menopause stopping of the ovarian functions, no primordial follicles, then we have a negative feedback on the hypothalamic pituitary axis. And that negative feedback will secrete gonadotrophins, FSH, so FSH will be elevated and then it also will be elevated, such as prominent elevation, okay? So, in the absence of physiological or pathological causes. What does what does that mean? That we in some cases we have a cessation of menstrual cycle for around one year. When in physiological cases like in a pregnancy, okay, in pregnancy we have amenorrhea. Okay, but it is uh, there is something that uh, led to the absence of menstrual cycle. Uh, in menopause, it should be permanent cessation of menstrual cycle forever. Okay, and to diagnose it, uh, one year should have passed, should has passed. Okay, so it is a retrospective diagnosis. You can only diagnose after one year, looking back. Okay, with an elevation in the FSH levels. Okay, and the absence of physiological or pathological causes of menopause. So it is again a retrospective diagnosis, this diagnosis or the uh, definition of menopause. What is the average age of menopause? It is 51 years, okay, 51 years. Now let's move to the causes of menopause. Menopause actually is a natural, is a natural process, okay? But it may be caused by medical things, diseases, okay, or by drugs, or by surgical causes, like ophorectomy, for example, and so on. We have two conditions that are important to talk about here, which are premature ovarian failure, premature ovarian failure, and early menopause. Premature ovarian failure will lead to premature menopause, and that means menopause at the age between 30 and 40, okay? But menopause at the age between 40 and 45 is early menopause. So early and premature, you have to differentiate between early between the, uh, in the age 40 to 45, premature 30 to 40. Okay, what are the causes of premature ovarian failure? The most common cause of premature ovarian failure is not known. Okay, it is idiopathic process premature. It may be due to autoimmune disease that destruct the ovaries due to infection that destructs the ovary also okay or due to ophorectomy y chromosome mosaicism okay and chemo radiotherapy chemo and radiotherapy also may, may lead to ovarian failure so mostly if you have a autoimmune infection ophorectomy anything can destruct the ovaries like chemo and radiotherapy infection the chromosomal abnormalities, autoimmune disease, okay, ophorectomy, and th these are the causes of premature. What about the early ovarian failure or early menopause? What are the causes? Smoking, the most important. Most of the times, patients that smoke will have two to three years earlier menopause than normal women. Okay, so it is a cause of early menopause. DM diabetes okay family history of early menopause sometimes you can find the families with early menopause that a lot of members of these families uh, is with, are with this condition nulliparity early menarche these come together okay nulliparity early menarche smoking the and family history and these are the causes of the most important thing I want you to know here is to differentiate between early and premature. Okay? Early and premature. 
so it is about the age of the patient. So these are the causes of menopause. Now let's move to the pathophysiology of menopause. What happens and what lead to the complications of menopause and the symptoms. Now I'm going to talk about that. At birth, we have about 2 million primordium follicles. 2 million primordium follicles. And by time, they just decrease, okay? And for example, at 20 week gestation, they would be 4 to 5 million at birth, 2 million. Then at puberty, well, they will be about 250,000, okay? 250,000. And at menopause, there will be few, a few, very few primordium follicles or ovums, okay? So we will have about 1,000, just 1,000 or less in primordium follicles. So this is unlike in male, okay? Sperm count will not if it will be affected with the age of the male. But in female, Primordium follicles will decrease with this. When we reach the menopause, the decrease in, in primordium follicle will lead to decrease in estrogen secretion because estrogen is secreted from these follicles. Okay, and the body will try to compensate this function by uh, secreting a lot of FSH. Okay, so we will fight in compensated ovarian failure. Okay, phase high FSH and in and then the body try try and try to compensate and will fail to compensate. So we will have decompensated ovarian failure. Decompensated and decompensated ovarian failure, we will find even more uh, FSH levels. Okay, up to 10 to 20 folds FSH levels, and also we will find high LH levels about three folds just okay but the question is why do we have lower uh, increasing in LH than in FSH because LH has a shorter half time shorter. so we have very high FSH. by the way we can diagnose a menopause with above 40 FSH if we have above 40 FSH then we can diagnose menopause okay so this is first thing to what about androgens what happened to androgens in menopause it will they will decrease okay why because some of these androgens are produced in the ovaries and as you know we have an ovarian failure okay in uh, menopause so the androgens will decrease because we have some of them are produced by thicker cells of the ovaries okay and the other uh, do we uh, will we have a zero androgen in the menopause no of course because adrenal gland also secretes uh, androgens like uh, androstenedol okay and androsterone these are produced by the adrenal gland. so androgen will decrease what about estrogens we said that estrogen will decrease. We have a failure in estrogen. Does that mean that we will have no estrogen anymore? No, we will have some estrogens, okay? And the, four, the most common form of estrogen in menopause or postmenopausal is estrone, okay? Premenopausal or before menopause, it used to be estradiol, okay? Estra they all is the most common pre menopausal but after post menopausal we will have estrone and the question is why because estrone is the most it is produced in the peripheral adipose tissue not in the ovaries okay it is the result of aromatization of some androgens in the peripheral adipose tissue and post menopause you will still have adipose tissue okay we will not have ovaries uh, active ovaries so we'll have estradiol uh, will not be produced anymore estradiol uh, in the post menopause 
but we will have a stronger response, okay? So this is why. And also, in menopause, we will have increased levels of insulin resistant, okay? Because of central obesity, they will be uh, uh, insulin resistant, okay? I want to just remind you at the point of menopause, you will have all our sites or our atritic, okay? There will be atresia of these oral sites, okay? And also, I will define you perimenopause. The perimenopause is the period of three to five years prior to menopause. And in this period, we will have some signs and symptoms of menopause. We will have some anovulatory uh, cycles. Okay, so we start to suspect that menopause is near. We have in about three to five years pre-menopause. Some books say, say that it is 10 to 15 years before menopause. Okay, the idea is we will have symptoms of menopause. I have shortened follicles and luteal dysfunction in period perimenopause, okay? This is all in this video. In the next video, I'm going to talk about how to diagnose menopause, the symptoms of menopause, and the treatment of menopause. Thank you very much for watching.